And the first presentation is from Peter B. Uh, called um, A Holodeck by August, please. Or keep your meta where your data is in the file system. Thank you very much, Yannicke. So I only have 25 minutes. And the following idea that I'll be presenting to you, mm, I'm not sure about it. And I'd really like you to just give it a chance and play along. So first of all, I need two hands. Breathe in and out as a physical preparation for please be able to let go of certain assumptions of how you deal with digital data, meta and payload data, and any input, positive and negative, and anything else is encouraged and welcome. So, what's this all about? Who of you is dealing with metadata? Or who of you is not dealing with metadata? It's probably easier. <laughs> who of you has ever, I call it like metadata and file wrangling? Sometimes wrestling, sometimes wrangling can be creative, nerve wracking, boring, entertaining, anything. Nodding heads, like, so there's your files, your data, and there's your catalog. Anyone familiar with the distance between that? How to synchronize, there's links, there's files, there's path, there's file names. Anyone ever had to come up with a file naming scheme that works over long term, integrates well with others, and so on and so forth. So what's this all about? We're here for the professional part of this. And in the end, I'll know at first it's like private usage of metadata in data stuff. I don't tag my photos in my personal files. I have my nests on my storage, and I'm also going crazy, but why I'm not tagging them or using any catalog or asset management system, although I'm able to not only set them up to, to configure them to import, export, I can do all this, and that's exactly why I'm not doing it anymore from a personal use, because it's driving me crazy. It's such a commitment. So my aha effect, the holodeck by August. So I'm involved in metadata conversions, import, export from several collection management systems, asset management, too long a list. From system to system, from application to application, from layout to layout. Bring it on and you'll see my face melt, cry, laugh, I don't know, lots of emotions. Um, what I'm proposing here is, please, what if we could just make use of name value tags you're like, okay, well, you ought to do that, Peter. What's your point? On the same level as you put a file name, like in the file system, like not in a catalog, not in a, not inside, not embedded. Just, I want to have it like as simple and plain as a file name, but without the restrictions, keeping the meta where the data is, and actually using the file system as a ba database, and everything will just become an indexing cache front end to that. But that's that's details of implementation. All free and open source and standard and awesome, of course. Um, what's with the holodeck? So for you who are not familiar with what a holodeck is, I'm a nerd. Star Trek, not Star Wars, also good. Star Trek, more, better. They have something that looks like this. So you have like a grid, and it can project photons and basically materialize matter according to software. So basically, you have a world simulator. And you can walk in there, and it just feels real, and you can just say, hey, computer, I want to have this and that, or I want to see this and that. And that's like, yeah, I always try to be funny with like a holodeck, and I'm very serious about this idea. So why by August, and what is it? So involved in projects, public money funded project, and list of Ashley Bluer's 75 plus collection management asset systems, it's, what keeps reappearing on my desk is the wish. We want to have everything digital. We want to have it awesome. We want it easy and fast. And oh yeah, in, in no time. That's me. No, but you want me to build a holodeck by August. And they don't even know what a holodeck is. So disclaimer, what I'm proposing is not a new technology. It's basically putting together components that already exist. So that's why a lot of technicians I spoke with over the year that I had this idea were like, it already exists. What's your point? And I'm like, exactly. And I may be an ad for FOSS, for free and open source software, because 
I also want to suggest how things could be done, and there's existing components, but I only, um, I want to use open stuff only so that I'm just offering new opinions and options. Existing components. Object storage. Who of you knows what FAT32 means? Or what a file system is? So the file system, huh, you, you've touched that before. So basically the way we now store files since back to the 70s and the only common ground for exchanging data is there's a file name and there's a folder position, something like that. And uh, that became so frustratingly reliable-ish that people, who of you puts metadata information descriptive in the file name? Yeah, me, me too, but not, not at work. Who of you has Excel sheets or tables to, to hold made it annotation metadata? And you, who of you has like a cataloging system to do that? And some of your hands were not going up. I hope you get my, I, you're, I involved you right now. So there's a thing called object storage. I stumbled over this because a client of mine, he had his uh, collection data stored and there were no files and folders. That was just metadata tags and I had to use an S3 protocol application thing to actually access these objects. So whenever you put stuff on an online cloud storage large scale provider, it's very likely you're actually copying your stuff on an object storage. An object storage is a new kind of file system thing that you copy your files and folders and your file and folder names will just become metadata tags and there is no folder location. You basically have a data lake that you can say, I wanna have this object. You basically search and query. Jonas from the Jack Film Archive, he's running such an object storage here. And um, I'll ask him, and you may, I don't know, if Jonas, if you want people to ask you, but he set this up and it works. So these things exist, and you can have file objects and attach metadata to it. Local search tools already deal with indexing and user interfaces for this. So there's Marion Yax from the Mediatek. They have like an in-house search and location tool for all their data. So these things exist and they work, so whenever you speak about like can't be, it's already there. All these things are there, need to be orchestrated and used, tested, tuned. The animated GIF up there is from Min.io, it's an object storage FOSS implementation, the one that Jonas is using, and it shows that basically you configure your storage, you have, all these things exist, and they also have user interfaces already. We're actually right in the middle, but where to begin, I like to clarify some terms. I never assume that anything is clear. Who of you is not familiar, not familiar with files and folders? I was really hoping so. Metadata, not familiar. Not so, it's like, so you have a, like a music file and the music. <laughs> yes, master, <laughs> of course. Um, you have your music file, so actually your song is your data. And if you have like artist, title, track information, year and so on, that's the metadata. The stuff that we wrote on the tapes back then, like the stickers. Data payload, so the song itself would be like the payload. I call it payload now because if I use the term files, it's gonna be very confusing. So you have the payload, like the song or the image, and then you have metadata, and you have this as an object. Data objects is basically just a new idea of structuring your, your data. So imagine you have a text file. Ever tried to annotate a pl Who of you does not know what a plain text file is? No, no shame, .txt, Theodore, Xava, Theodore. You know what a text file is. Ever tried to annotate a text file? Using the metadata fields of the text file file? You don't have any. If you have a text file, it's a data object, you can just annotate it in a standardized way. You can right now upload it to whatever cloud storage of the three world providers that we all are being provided by, masters, and annotate the text file. That's an object. 
file system, hierarchical file systems, folders, file names, that's what we have since the 70s. And I want to not get rid of it, but let go. Like, breathing in, breathing out. Bye-bye. File and folder names are now just metadata. And even me will tell you, yes, go ahead, put everything in the file name. I don't care anymore. Spaces, special characters, it's a database field now. Go crazy. Folder path, it's just a delimited string. Use it. So, what we're still at right now is this is a very nice graph of a portable network graphics PNG image. Probably every one of you, I hope, has had like a PNG. It's quite popular. Has any one of you ever tried to give it a title, a metadata title field that goes with the PNG? I was actually surprised I also never tried. And in there, I, I don't see it. I checked the specs. You can do it. I tried it. You can use GIMP. You can add metadata. I saw it in the hex editor. It's there, but I, yeah. What software can I use to read PNG metadata? And that's just one file format. Nodding heads again, getting there. So yeah, jumping back and forth. The Unix philosophy, so I'm a long-term Linux user, so for me everything already is a file. And in Unix, the thing why now basically this is whatever embedded device or thing that made it to the 21st century still works is because it's based on the Unix philosophy in like 99% chance. Everything is a file. Your sound card is a file. Your video card is a file. It's like, it's really awesome. You can basically on the shell access anything like a file. Pretty cool. If we now let go of files and folders and translate these to data objects, my aha holodeck philosophy, everything is an object. And now we're in the Lego world. Like with the Minecraft Cambridge thing, the thing why it's so awesome, it's because it's Lego-ish and not Playmobil. Anything can have its metadata with its payload content, as simple as Lego, and to be taken for granted like file names. That's the future I'm dreaming of, and I'm actually thinking of a prototype that can be built in like three months to half a year with existing components. So we're not there yet, but we can be. And the file system can serve as a database that over time will actually automatically become a semantic graph. Yeah, and use interface like that. Dude, there's an object, and it's related to the other object, and if this, and you basically just ask questions, you query your file system. You're not like, in which folder did I put this? Damn, and it wasn't even me, someone else put it in the folder, and like, I'm going crazy merging data collections. And it's not just because I'm getting old, it's really, mm. So, what if you could simply store and use any metadata reliably persistent with its payload content? drag and drop, copy, paste, convert, view, edit, any metadata in any file manager or tools that supports a basic object storage name value, metadata layer handling, and import expert catalog database entries like copy pasting files because there is no more necessity to treat data objects with and without payload differently. It's just like, yeah, it doesn't have payload, so it's just a database entry. And I thought I'd be the first one to do Back to the Future references. But Ralph beat me to it. So what if? That was as easy as using the file folder names because it's like a basic functionality of your file system without classical restrictions. Like go Unicode in there, bit proof, over the whole life cycle of a digital object because a file system now is only released as production stable if you can rely on it. Before that, you don't use it for production, so a file system needs to be tested. These object storages are used for the whole world to dump their data into it on a large scale already for years. So I'd say it's production stable. You can store hash codes as metadata field for any payload. You don't have to have a hash code manifest and drag it along, it just... What if you don't have to worry about naming a file anymore? You could just copy everything into a huge data lake and just query out whatever you want to have. And by using objects as meta objects without payload that can relate to each other, you basically, um, for example, my music collection, you have artist X Bloom, and now it's reading embedded metadata tags, making a small cache in the music application, and so I can search by artists and so on. You're probably familiar with this. 
Now imagine that's not a local database of an application, but it's like just an object graph that you don't look at. It's like a database in your file system, and it's just indexing it. So there's an object with your artist name, and that can actually have a link to Wikidata and all the IDs to Wikidata. So basically, it's linked open data built in. Mm. Metadata only objects would basically be catalog entries, and you can handle them like files. There's just no need to distinguish between meta and data anymore. You'll just treat objects and their relationships to each other. That would make features interoperable. I know vendors will probably try to not make it interoperable, but actually it probably can be just way more effort to make things non-interoperable if we really use this than just go along with, like, write it with the metadata layer on the object. So you can exchange, like here I have my audio application, uh, Clementine, and there's like this heart feature which needs a login on a certain platform and the metadata data of this is not embedded because MP3 and MP4 can't do this, and so this feature is only in this application, but not in the other. Or if you tag stuff in iPhoto and you copy it over, whereas your metadata, if it be with the objects, it just be like, okay, you copy it on a USB stick, the metadata is there, import the metadata in the cache of the other application and you're good. Embedded metadata. Why embed metadata? Because the file name's just not long enough, <laughs> uh, not the right place, but you want to have the meta stays with the data. But now you need a file format that can contain your meta. What about media container formats? And this is where we go Alice in Wonderland. Um, so related data stays together. Now, I'm about to wrap this up. It's like, imagine you have a video file, MKV, MAV, AVI, whatever, and you take the media streams Take the descriptive metadata fields off the container format and make a related object graphs on your regular object storage. And you can just double click that meta object and it'll load like a video. And now compare this to a scanned film where you have a file structure. But on an object storage with what I'm proposing, there'd be no real technical difference except for the amount of frames you'd have there. But it'll be like related graphs. And if you want to add a new audio track to such a video object, you just relate an audio file to the video object and say like, oh yeah, there's an audio track. Oh yeah, it has metadata fields. Language, Dutch, language, whatever. And you can just make a related graph. So file format differences would dissolve on the file format level. Yes, I'm going crazy over this idea now. Hi, welcome back. There was a glitch in the recording at the presentation in Prague. So I'm continuing it here from my lab in the office. We left off at, you could actually dissolve media container formats in a related graph. And the next issue is performance. Whenever someone, whenever I, I speak with this, about this idea with anyone, their main thing is, yeah, even if it was doable, what about performance? What about the size of the data? What about speed? What about interoperability? And Something I like to add is, is it MacGyverable, meaning that you can recombine it and use it for a very long time under any circumstance. So regarding size, we have the use cases already. So there are databases, there are caches, there are indexes, there is the metadata stored already in different forms. XML, JSON databases whatsoever. So I really think that the additional size is negligible, if at all relevant, considering that the size of the payload, especially for audiovisual, in comparison to metadata. Metadata is, let's say it's a few megabytes, let's say you add up a lot of metadata, then it becomes hundreds of megabytes. That's a lot of metadata. I, I don't see any issue here because we have the same requirements right now and we're tackling them right now. Same goes for speed. And actually for speed it could be, no, I, I say it again, it's already done. So you have a, a text field and you, you enter something in a search query and it basically, you use indexers already. There can be performance issues, they can be tackled, but if you look at the 
the benefits of like really using the file system as a database I, I think it's worth it and manageable so where to begin implementing this I really think it's a powerful idea so first of all there's an fast licensed object storage called minio and it's production stable and it's very easy to set up I have not detail configured one but here on that machine I have set up one in like 15 minutes according to their default online instructions so we can already play with it and see how it goes the next thing is there are things called no SQL and like MongoDB where it's already different than classical databases where you define the schema and you had your tables in there no you, you take text files and you kind of index them and can carry them this might also be a, a good thing for building a prototype then search indexers like Elasticsearch or something like that as I say I have not built something like this myself but I know the components exist and I've seen parts of these systems or systems that actually do stuff like that in action it's just not well orchestrated to each other if there's any more ideas or input or experiences from your side I'd be very happy to hear from them what to feed the early prototype with well um there's a project in Austria where they collect from 200 institutions memory institutions quite diverse from big institutions to very small collections and there's cataloging entries in all flavors and forms and layouts from comma separated value excel sheets to json xml and in all kinds of different metadata schema and layouts and they've been rights cleared to go online and be published so i think this would be a nice corpus to test it with if you have any more ideas please again let me know another thing is also that like <laughs> feeding it a music or photo collection for personal usage and see how it goes to tag them because you'll be amazed what it feels like if like the tagging is done on the file system level and the viewer the, the tool you actually use can be replaced it doesn't matter if you tagged it in this application or you tagged it in that application the tags are on the file system level it's like it shouldn't matter which application you used to name a file this is exactly what I'm talking about as convenient and as taken for granted as a file name just a bit better that rabbit hole goes way deeper when thinking it through that using Meta with data on a file system level it goes way deeper and I, I just put here a screenshot of imagine your file system becomes an annotated graph over lifetime because that's now its nature that's that's quite powerful and if an implementation prototype is not awesome and doesn't make you happy then it's actually not what I suggested here or simply not finished yet because there may be more work necessary than I anticipate yet I think now I know how much work is being put in tackling metadata file handling small medium large scale I know it from personal use from people coming to me like how do they handle their photos and videos just their family collections <laughs> the typical excel sheets for annotating collections to setting up maintaining migrating and whatever asset management systems if we build a prototype like that we'll see more so why bother because I say you'll have to face an object storage sooner or later anyways because the hierarchical file systems do not scale well enough anymore they you can literally ask developers and users you can feel that this paradigm is coming to an end and the scalability of storage is the reason why object storage and data lakes were invented over 20 years ago so anyone storing files on a popular online cloud service you already have your files in an object storage I'm like very sure you just don't get the benefits because you're always mapping it down 
to a files and folders paradigm and approaching it with that files and folders paradigm and not really making use of the metadata except for maybe like, oh, I can tag stuff. Anyways, it's there and you'll have to face it in a good way. So let's embrace this. So where are we right now? This is a slide I've put in after the presentation. So this is something that was not presented in Prague because I did some more research. So there are terms data warehouse versus data lake and data warehouse, I think is that describes the case that we currently see primarily. It's the intention that you get stuff in order, you put it in the paradigm of a warehouse where you have shelves and you have your spaces and boxes, which really fits that files and folders thinking. And we all know how how that feels, how, how it's like it slows ingestion of new data. And even if you've sorted it up, when there's different data coming in or you connect with others, you can literally feel what it's like versus a data leak. So here you have schema on write and schema on read. One is cleaning it all up before you can sort it in to your warehouse. The other one is like, okay, take what is there and filter it on demand, structure it on demand. This is more what I'm speaking about when I'm speaking about this holodeck object storage thing. There is more to read up on this. This is why I wanted to give you the terms there. As I said, I'm not saying anything new regarding the technology. What I'm, what the new part is to orchestrate these pieces to each other and use it for and use it differently than the way it's done right now. So that was it. Thank you very much. And if there's any ideas, input or questions, I'd be very happy to hear from you because it's, I think it's the right time. So have a great day. Goodbye.